Hello everyone, this is Darkon, and this is Villain Mondays, where I talk about the various villains throughout the different video game series. Today, I'm going to be talking about Garland. Garland is the first boss you face in the first Final Fantasy, as well as technically the last boss in the same game. While Garland has had a few changes over the years, he is more well defined in his most recent revamp. While all, of, while all of his incarnations have him wearing full set of armor, as well as a large torn helmet, his latest revamp looks a bit more well-defined, with him having a blue cape classed with a gold star, wielding a very large sword, as well as the horns on his helmet tend to be larger and more protruded than before. Garland was known as the most powerful knight from the Kingdom of Cornelia, who later kidnapped the princess of the kingdom in order to ransom her for the kingdom itself. This did not work well as the Warriors of Light chased him down to where he fled, the Chaos Shrine, and defeated him. But that wasn't the end of him. Closer to the end of the game, the Warriors of Light find out that the four fiends from their time were sent by their master from 2000 years in the past. Knowing this, the Warriors use the Elemental Crystals and the Dark Crystal to go into the past and defeat the four fiends again and go after their master. As it turns out, their master is none other than Garland himself, who sent the Fort Fiends into the future, so when he is defeated the first time, he is sent back into the past to do the same thing. This created a time loop to ensure he would always survive, and in the end, Garland absorbs the Fort Fiends' power and becomes Chaos. However, with, the, with his defeat, the time loop becomes broken and the Warriors of Light return to their time. It is mentioned that even Garland will be among those waiting suggesting that the Warriors of Light did indeed succeed in breaking the cycle. It isn't until Dissidia, however, that we get a better look at his personality, which is arrogant and brutal, showing a love for war and battle. It is also implied that his love for such things are his way of dealing with being stuck in such a time, in such a time loop, where cosmos and chaos fight over and over. This gives us the feeling that he has no free will of his own, and for some reason, he feels that he has no right to such. This last bit might imply that he is somewhat either a defeatist of sorts, realizing that no matter what, the cycle will happen again and again. Or it could also mean that he might regret some of the things he has done or knows he will continue to do because he feels that he has no choice nor free will. Garland is also an inspiration for the Final Fantasy XIV Garlean Empire not only in their attitude in being basically a military state, but also in their armor design, as a lot of their, a lot of their armor looks similar to Garland's armor. This is Darkon, and I hope to see you again soon for more Villain Mondays, along with the twin segment, Hero Fridays. So long, and farewell.